My name is Rolinda Rose and I'm the Director of Educational Resources and OER Specialist at UA Costot. We're now using the latest edition of APA Style, which is the seventh edition, and there are some changes that students need to know about. Before we look at APA, here's a quick reminder of what citation is and exactly why we use it. It's important to cite our sources to let readers know about the material coming from another source. Citing also allows readers to find that information quickly. We need to cite to not only credit the original author, but to avoid plagiarism. You all know what plagiarism is by now. Plagiarism usually results in academic penalties and in some cases, legal and criminal action. When you cite sources, it shows that you've researched what you're writing about and it strengthens your work by lending support to your own thoughts. Now that we remember what citing is and why we do it, let's talk about APA style. APA stands for American Psychological Association. We typically use APA in social sciences such as psychology, sociology, nursing, and business. One mistake often made is to think that APA is merely a way to cite sources. APA actually covers the stylistics of your writing from point of view to word choice. It's also about the organization of content. As we go through these slides together, remember that although these slides follow APA style 7th edition, your instructor may require something different. Another thing that folks often forget is that social sciences uses an objective tone. Objective tone is impersonal or unbiased because it focuses on facts and avoids opinions. Concentrate on research to help support your ideas. One of the best ways to stay unbiased is to present all sides of the argument. Don't use personal pronouns like I or you. Sometimes we call the objective tone the academic tone. Remember to avoid including your personal opinions when writing in APA. The objective tone allows readers to learn facts and form their own opinions. When writing in APA style, you should also use a purpose statement instead of a thesis statement. This is why we don't typically write humanities papers in APA style. The two styles are completely different with MLA using a subjective tone and APA using an objective tone. You're probably wondering how a purpose statement differs from a thesis statement. A thesis statement makes a specific assertion about a topic and predicts how it will be developed. Unlike a thesis statement, a purpose statement announces the scope and the direction of the paper, but it does not reveal the author's conclusions. Bias-free language is important in any writing, but APA has specific rules about inclusivity and respect when talking about gender. We'll talk about it more later, but the best place to go for information about APA style is apastyle.apa.org. One of the new things about recent updates to any style of writing is the acceptance of a singular they to show inclusivity. This is the standard APA format for students. Keep in mind that your instructor may have different guidelines. APA format includes a title page, an abstract, and a references page in addition to the main body of the paper. The lines should be double spaced with one inch margins. There are a few different fonts that are acceptable, but none exceed the 12 point size, so don't try increasing font size to fill up the paper. You'll use pagination, but unlike MLA, don't include your last name. A title page includes the title, the author's name, 
the school or the college, the name and ID of the course, the instructor's name, and the due date. The title will be centered and typed in boldface. If we look at the next slide, we can see a sample of the title page. You can see the pagination is in the right hand corner. The title consists of two lines. There's not a specific number of lines to start at. You can just kind of eye where to start on the paper. It's usually about midway. You can see the rest of the author's information below the title. A big change in APA 7th edition, which student writers everywhere celebrate, is that students no longer have to use a running head. Professional papers still require a running head, though. If your instructor requires you to use a running head, see our video tutorial, Adding a Running Head and Page Numbers in APA Format. If you're not sure how to set up double spacing in Microsoft Word, this slide shows a step-by-step -step process. The good news is that once you've set it up, you can set it to default so that all future documents are automatically set to double spacing. To set margins in Microsoft Word, Select Layout at the top and then Margins on the left. Make sure that the one inch normal template is selected. Pagination can be set by using the Insert tab at the top. Select Page Number, Top of Page, and Plane Number 3. Something students need to remember is that if you haven't already set your font, Make sure you highlight the number and select the same font that you're using in the body of the paper. All the font should be consistent. Speaking of font, select the arrow just to the right of font on the home tab. Select the appropriate font and size. Just like line spacing, you have the option to set as default so that you don't have to remember to check your font on every paper. There are four major sections in an APA paper. The title page, abstract, main body, and a references page. If you've never written an abstract, don't panic. An abstract is simply a concise summary of key points in your research. The abstract is a single paragraph with 150 to 250 words. You can use keywords to help researchers find your work. There's a separate video available on our YouTube channel about writing abstracts. This is a sample of an abstract from Purdue Online Writing Lab. The title abstract is typed in boldface and centered. Don't indent at the beginning of the paragraph. At the bottom, you can indent and italicize keywords and then list any of the keywords you're using. A solid abstract is accurate, non-evaluative, coherent, and legible, and concise. Remember, do not exceed 250 words. The References page appears as a separate page after the body of the paper. In MLA style, we use a Works Cited page, but in APA style, we call it a References page. Same concept of listing sources, but in a different format. One thing that both styles share is that entries are double-spaced, listed alphabetically, and the second and subsequent lines are indented. The page is titled References and Boldface. To set a hanging indent, you can use the same steps you'd use to set up line spacing. Just be sure to select Hanging under Indentation and then Special. Some instructors may require you to use headings. 
Those are easy to follow at apastyle.apa.org. A signal phrase is a short introduction phrase that names the author or article title and lets the reader know that a quote or a paraphrase is coming. Using signal phrases provides an effective transition between your ideas and your supporting sources. Use the past tense or present perfect tense for signal phrases. Remember, there is a focus on the date in APA style, so the date will be in parentheses within the sentence. If you don't use a signal phrase, use in-text citation to credit the author and show the date. If there is a page number available, be sure to put it in your in-text citation. Anything you're citing in the paper must have a corresponding entry on the references page except for personal interviews, and we'll talk about that soon. Capitalization is a little bit different in APA style. Since the focus is on dates, only use the first initial of the first name and the middle initial, if there is one, of the author. Capitalize words with four or more letters in a title. There are some exceptions for certain words in that rule. Check the APA website for specifics. On the references page, capitalize the first letter of the first word in a title and then the first letter of the first word after a semicolon and do capitalize proper nouns. If your paper includes quotations that are 40 words or longer, you'll need to use a block quote to separate the material from the rest of the paper. Indent the entire passage, omit quotation marks, and place the parenthetical citation after the closing punctuation mark. When citing a work by two authors, name both in the signal phrase or in the parenthetical citation. In the text, use the word and and spell it out, but use the ampersand in parentheses. When citing personal interviews or emails, use in-text citation with the subject's name, personal communication, and the date. This is an exception to the rule that in every, for every in-text citation, there needs to be a corresponding entry on the references page. Don't include personal communication on the references list because readers have no way of accessing that information. The basic rules for the references page is to use hanging indentation, list all entries alphabetically, and invert the author's names. If you use a source with multiple authors, up to 20 must be listed on the references page. For longer works like books or newspaper titles, or be sure to italicize the titles. Shorter works don't require any type of special format. You can't memorize every citation formula. It's, it's impossible and it often changes. The best way to master writing styles is by knowing exactly where to look. I've already mentioned apastyle.apa.org. It's one of the best because it's user friendly and it includes so much information. Another place to check writing styles is Purdue Online Writing Lab or Purdue OWL. And yet a third way to master writing styles is by asking a tutor at the ERC. Remember apastyle.apa.org or bookmark it so that you know where to look. Many instructors require the use of ERC online databases, which often have citation for articles. Be sure to double check those at the website. Sometimes they are outdated or you may not be selecting the right style. If you have any questions about APA style, visit the ERC at any campus. Again, we recommend apastyle.apa.org as the best reference site.